Time for a look at today's AM Minnesota. John Anderson in for Gordy Cosfeld, who is having a nice vacation in Italy. I know, Bardarno. Yeah, so he's enjoying things over there. Hopefully he'll come back without an international incident or something. <laughs> so, we haven't gotten a call yet saying they're not letting him come back. So. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> so, well, we're going to be talking about the uh, Merlin Players next show coming up at the Paradise Center for the Arts. And Juliana Skluzacek is here along with Cynthia Paley. 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 I'll make a little note there. Long A. There we go. And uh, Juliana, another great show coming up, it sounds like. I know. We're really excited. We had a terrific uh, dress rehearsal last night, and we're going to be ready for everybody tomorrow night. And the name of the show is? Love, Loss, and What I Wore. It's based on the book by Eileen Beckerman, and the play is written by Nora and Delia Efron, who wrote such wonderful movies as You've Got Mail, Sleepless in Seattle, Nora wrote Harry Met Sally, um, all those some really iconic comedies. And Nora just passed away not too long ago. Right, this was the last project she did um, with her sister. Okay. And uh, you've got a great cast lined up? I do have a great cast lined up. It's a regional cast. Um, Cynthia here is from Oatana, and I also have Shelly Whitehead coming in from Wasika. Stephanie Weiss coming from the Twin Cities, who's been seen on her stage recently in Santa, Land, Santa Diaries. And then also um, Sydney plays Salstrom, who has been in Santa Diaries and was in Steel Magnolias last spring. Sure. And um, also a new a person new to Merlin players, uh, Jen uh, Pike. Pike, Jennifer Pike, yep. and uh, she's just you know she's w quite wonderful. I'm so glad to have her with us. And the show's kicking off tomorrow night. Yes, it is, and we're going to have a reception as always after the show, and we're going to be serving Cosmos, ladies. So <laughs> come on along. And actually, someone asked me about that. That's Cosmopolitans, the drink. Yeah, because yeah. unbelievably there are some people when you say Cosmos, they're not sure what you're talking about. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't remember what's in those. But uh, cranberry juice, vodka, uh, triple sec, you know that kind of stuff. So everything mm. good. Everything <laughs> good. Yep. And uh, talk a little bit without giving away too much because we want people to go see the show. Talk a little bit about the show. It's um, a kind of a retrospective. It's how women view their lives through pieces of iconic clothing. There is a section on, um, uh, you know, closets. You know, the women come out, they're called clotheslines, and she comes out, and it starts with, I have nothing to wear. And then it goes through all the things we say while we're looking in our closets, and then it ends with, I have nothing to wear. <laughs> and... <laughs> I know, everyone's okay. laughing. I mean, husbands are out there going, that's my wife. Um, and then there's also a great clothesline on uh, buying your first bra, which has a great statement in it that says, my father went with me, I still can't talk about it. So, and it's just, it's very, very funny. There's one on prom dresses. There's uh, some on, there's, you know, that the one section where I was just talking about is turned around by a wonderful monologue that Cynthia has later in the show, which is about um, a breast cancer, breast cancer survivor and how she um, used, her friend gave her a beautiful lace bra that she would take with her to chemo so that it gave her hope for the future. And it's a beautiful monologue that you deliver beautifully. So. Oh, thank you. That's my favorite piece in the show. Uh, and so, you know, in typical Nora Ephron style, you'll be laughing and laughing, and she'll come around and she'll just make you sigh. There's a great um, piece on shoes that Sydney Salstrom uh, does that is about, you know, uh, in shoes and high heels and how great they make our legs look. But when you wear them, you can't think. So you have to choose between high heels and thinking. And um, it's just, it, there are a lot of pieces like that that are just one in wedding dresses and Okay. We'll uh, hear more about love, loss, and what I wore coming up in just a minute. We're talking with uh, Juliana Skuzacek and Cynthia Paley about love, loss, and what I wore. The Merlin Players show coming up this weekend at the Paradise Center for the Arts. John Anderson sitting in for Gordy Coswell at AM Minnesota this morning. And I uh, just want to mention coming up tomorrow, uh, Jerry Grosskreutz will be hosting the show, and Joe Spitzmiller from the Minnesota Department of Agriculture will be here uh, talking with Jerry tomorrow morning.
and uh, we kind of touched a little bit about uh, what the show is about. You're going to be giving away a pair of tickets a little bit later on. I am. If you've been paying attention, you should be able to answer. <laughs> And uh, talk a little bit about why you chose to do this show this time around. Well, it's um, last year with Steel Magnolias, we found out that uh, we have a really wonderful talent pool of uh, female actors. And this show is for women of all ages. And so there's really not enough um, plays out there that showcase those talents. And so when one comes along, you look at it, you read it, and you know, with the people who wrote it, Nora and Delia Efron, you're thinking this is going to be funny, and it's wonderfully funny, and so uh, we, we went for it. So, uh, I think it's kind of the, the best of all worlds because you'll laugh, you'll cry, and then you'll laugh again, and then you'll laugh some more. Um, and it, it is true, it's wonderful to be in a show with four other strong women, and um, we're all so different. Um, in, in every way you could think of. We're all very different in, in personality styles, um, in, in um, how we portray things, in, in how we look, and it's just fabulous to have us all working together. And sometimes that doesn't work, but it sounds like this is working pretty well. I don't know. I, th I felt like we were a family from the very beginning. I think, Julianne, I don't know if you were a little frustrated with us in the beginning, <laughs> because in the beginning of rehearsals, it was almost just like like an improv dream session every night. Somebody would start something and it would just go boom, 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 boom. Um, and, and I knew, actually I wasn't frustrated because I, I knew that one of the things that needed to happen was that they all needed to get to know each other and for the ensemble to work. Right. And you have to allow some time in the rehearsal process for that to happen. And because when you're out there with um, just five people on the stage, you rely on each other a lot, and so the trust has to be formed, and you know people get to know each other, and you're comfortable. And um, some of the stories require you to take some emotional risk, and you have to feel safe to do that, and uh, you have to know the people you're on stage with. Cynthia, you you've done a few uh, shows with the Merlin Players before. Is it still a nice, fresh, interesting, new experience every time, or always? Always, because it's always a different script, so you're telling a different story. There's always a different combination of people, and I feel like, too, I'm always a little bit different because hopefully we're, we're always changing and growing a little bit in our lives, so I hope that I come to each show having been a little bit changed And we were well. And we were talking a little bit during the break that you've done some of the background stuff on shows, too, like sound and things. I, lo I love doing sound design. What, what, what's all involved in that? Um, well, the whole concept of sound design is to try to pick um, music that will complement what's happening in the show. So that can either be pre-show music that kind of sets the mood um, for the show so that it's not quiet in the auditorium when people enter the theater, but then also snippets of things during the show that can be sound effects or pieces of music that help to tell the story and, and help to um, connect scenes. And that takes a little time to put together, I would imagine, find out what works and what doesn't. Sure. All right. And what got you interested in that originally? Um, I grew up just a fanatical music listener. Okay. I just always listening to things singing. Um, so it was kind of a natural transition, transition for me, and it's wonderful to be able to add that to being on stage. She's also tech savvy, so she knows how to design it in a computer and make it all happen. That's and always a plus. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, we should tell folks that the show starts, uh, remind folks again, the show starts tomorrow night, and the tickets are available starting today at the Paradise Box Office at noon. Right. Uh huh. And we're excited um, to have people come out. Opening night's going to be so much fun. Uh, if you've been coming to our shows lately, what's the Ever since we've been at the Paradise, we've been doing opening night receptions, and we've built up a really nice audience. They love to come for the excitement of opening night. I mean, the other shows are also really wonderful, but there's nothing like opening night at the theater. You know, there's an electricity that runs through the air, and everyone's just so, you know, ready and buzzed and ready to go. And so um, we invite people to come and enjoy the... Um, very special quality of an opening night performance and also the reception afterwards. Yeah, everybody's always, there's, a, there's an extra little nervousness, but yet everybody's excited and, mm -hmm. and uh, want to make it a great event and 
uh, it's always kind of kind of a fun night for opening night. Right, and I think um, especially with this show that people are going to. Um, it's not well known, and so you're not going to know what's going to happen. You're going to be surprised, and you're um, going to be um, taken aback and, uh, and go on a journey with these five women. I think that is really quite wonderful. How much are tickets for this show? They are $15, which is very affordable for adults, and um, $9 for 12 and under. But I will warn you that there is some language in this show that... Um, maybe little kids shouldn't be hearing so and I would have no part in that whatsoever <laughs> <laughs> you have no part of it no I also just wanted to quickly sure. say someone one of my friends uh, my male friends said to me well isn't this a chick show and I said well there's five women in it but you know let me ask you something are you a son do you have a mother <laughs> do you have hint hint a best friend who's a girl do you have sisters <laughs> Um, I think really it's something that there's something for everybody and I think men and women might have a different experience just because there are things that women only experience that that we talk about in the show but I, I think some a lot of the feelings are are universal feelings and and I guarantee that men will enjoy it too okay guys you heard it yeah Lock, plus, lock it up plus you it. you're gonna get some brownie points <laughs> That's guys great. you're gonna get plenty of brownie points and the, most of us guys always usually need a few of those so. <laughs> exactly so. you can bank them for the future there you go <laughs> shows uh, get underway tomorrow and then you're gonna have shows when uh, what are the right you got two weekends you're doing we two. have two weekends and so we open like you said tomorrow night and we run Saturday at 7:30 and Sunday at 2 o'clock supposed to be a rainy Sunday, a great way to spend the afternoon. And then next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th. It's not a long show. Um, it will take up two hours of your time. So come in and um, celebrate spring and enjoy some uh, fun with the Merlin Players at the Paradise. How do you sit and pick out these shows? I know there are some of the reasons why you picked this one out, but it's a group effort with the board of directors okay. and I will suggest things for them to read and we pass books around and talk about it at the meetings and um, come to a consensus. We like to look um, at what else we're doing that year and also what other theaters are doing. We're not going to do a show that requires you know, 15 men if the Little Theater of Oatana or Northfield Arts Guild are also doing men heavy shows. You know, you're not going to do that. There's only so much talent pool out there. So um, we knew that the Little Theater of Owatonna is going to be doing the producers here in June, and that's a male-heavy show. So we were looking for something to counterbalance that. And I suppose it all depends on how much the rights fees are and things like that, too. Absolutely. The, sometimes the rights can be very, very expensive. Um, they're not bad for this show, but like we're doing nine this summer, the musical nine, mm -hmm. and those rights are almost five thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, people don't understand that stuff is so expensive. Well, you got to pay the people that originally came up with the idea and the show, and they need to get their money. So, and you have to rent the music and, and you know all that, all that yeah, all that stuff. That all that legal on. stuff. All that legal <laughs> stuff, but. Um, but like you said, you know, I believe in paying the artists their fees. They, yeah. They're the ones who wrote the piece. And um, nowadays, especially with, you know, us being able to share music so widely and everything, I think that um, artists don't always get their fees anymore. We're talking with Juliana Skuzacek and Cynthia Paley about uh, the Merlin Players' Love, Loss, and What I Wrote going on at the Paradise Center for the Arts starting tomorrow night. You're going to give away those tickets. I am. We have two tickets for opening weekend, Good Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. You have to call in and answer the question, name one of the three movies that Nora Ephron has written. Just one of them. We talked about three of them earlier. So. Right. Call 507-334-0061. 334-0061 and give your answer and you might win a pair of tickets to go see the show. Right, $30 value. And, when, and those are for, are those for the Friday night performance? No, for Friday, Saturday, or, or Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Right. Um, Again, call 334-0061. You have to call that number. Okay. All right. Um, I want to talk about some of the other women in the show. And um, Stephanie Wise, who is coming down from the Twin Cities, Stephanie had, is a wonderful comic. But we have given her one of the um, 
when they put this show together, when Nora and Delia put this show together, they took the core story that Eileen Beckerman wrote, which is the character of Gingy in the show, and then they asked other women for their true stories. And so she does, in particular, Stephanie does one called um, The Robe, which is Rosie O'Donnell's story about her mother. Because Rosie O'Donnell was in the um, original cast on Broadway. Sure. And it is this, uh, it's a lovely story about how Rosie remembers her mother as a child who she lost um, when she was quite young to cancer that um, what she remembers about her mother is this blue velour, electric blue velour robe she used to wear in the mornings when she made them um, breakfast. You know, we all have those pictures in our minds, you know, if you have a grandmother that you remember, you know, what she looked like, or when you go out to the farm, you know, what did she have on, you know, and I think that um, we all have those pictures in our heads as we mm -hmm. grow and we mature, and um, I remember um, my husband's father, um, uh, Leonard Sklazacek, and I remember Leonard, um, he was a farmer, and I first, you know, time I met him, was when he came in from, you know, milking, and, you know, he had his bib overhauls on, which, he was a big man, so, you know, I was just like, this is the tallest guy I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and just remember those, I, I remember all those pictures in my head. So, um, I don't know, uh, I'm sure that other people out there have those too. Oh, yeah. So, it'd be a great jumping off point to come see the play and have some great conversations after I'm sure once I'm sure once people, you know, see the show they're gonna all a lot of memories are gonna get, get triggered as, as Cynthia kinda brought up, you know. I'm sure a lot of people have gone through a lot of the same experiences. Absolutely. What's it like uh, working with Juliana, Cynthia? Oh, <laughs> Stuff that, you, stuff that you can say on the radio. <laughs> Actually, truthfully, it, it is a joy to work for Juliana. She's just such an experienced director and has such wonderful visions um, for us to, to portray as, as actors. Um, she's very organized. Um, expectations are very clear. So I, I really enjoy um, working in that kind of situation. It's, um, she, she's a tough cookie. <laughs> you know, she <laughs> she really wants to pull the best out of us. But that shows in the performances. I mean, that they're they're good shows. I I feel that it does. I feel it does. I've never been in a show with Juliana where I did not feel completely ready opening night, and um, it it is. It's it's our opportunity to give our very best. And I suppose you probably get pretty excited every time she's looking for somebody of your type for a show. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> in fact, <laughs> I, I, as soon as the new season comes out, I, I do check out those shows and see if there isn't a part for for a, a middle-aged And soon you're going to be, woman. You soon you'll be working with a new boss at the Paradise Center for the Arts. I know. We're excited. I don't know who it is yet. They haven't hired yet. I know they've yeah. got it down to a couple of um, finalists, but... Um, I am excited about that and for someone to come in and continue to build on the work that Ryan has done and take us into the future. And you have to, I'm sure you have to work with them cl kind of close because I mean you have to coordinate dates and things like that with other things that are going on. Right, well a lot of it's in place already. Ryan was very organized as well and so our, um, our times are set for the next couple of seasons and so we're um, it, it's all kind of, so, a lot of it is already in place to be just kind of automatic now. Um, and it's such a great venue for us to work in. It's really just a, a wonderful stage and, and so much space. And, uh, and it's a beautiful space. And our set for this show is very simple. And um, it, it's uh, yards and yards and yards of white sheer draped on the stage and it looks very pretty and kind of and feminine so but you, yeah it's a real challenge for the actors because there's no furniture to hide behind there's no safety in the furniture ever but especially when you don't have a lot of set you're just you're out there do you have a regular group of people that are kind of, that always help you with the sets and things right i have a great group of um people um my build team usually consists of matt drenth and bill stronsky and my husband roger sklosacek and Michael Lambert came down from the cities and helped us with this show to give us 
a little more of an artistic vision about how things should look. So it's very simple but very elegant. Yes. You, and then of course you have to set up lighting and everything else. Too. Right. My light designer Darren Beecher is also from the Twin Cities. He's this is probably the seventh show he's done for Merlin, and he's brilliant. He really knows how to work in that space. I remember doing high school plays. I always hated the first tech night because it was always such a long evening because you were constantly being interrupted that they had to set a light here or the, you know you need to stand here. We have a special but name for that evening that I don't think I'm allowed to say <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> but it's so, um, but it's always it was always worth it when when the show oh, got is. done. Yeah. Oh, it is. So. And, you, and you go into that night knowing that it's mostly for the tech people. We actors are there to help the tech people to, to um, figure out their jobs and, and their part in the show. And so it's it's a give and take. And, and really, we, we had a, a very nice tech first tech yeah. this time around. Congratulations to Clyde Egham from Denison. He wins the tickets uh, for the, is it now this Friday, Saturday night? Yes, Saturday sir. Or s for this Friday or Saturday night, the tickets are And open. also Sunday. And also Sunday at 2. I, yeah. um, Clyde, I will put your name on these tickets, and they will be at the box office at the okay. Paradise waiting for you. So um, you'll want to call and make a reservation so you get a good seat, and just tell them that you won your tickets on KDHL. Okay, there you go. Thanks and for listening. Come, yeah, and if you come Friday night, I'll come find me and I'll have a Cosmo with you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's uh, Love, Loss, and What I Wrote to starting tomorrow. War. Night. What a war. War, war, war. <laughs> I can't read. Uh, love, Loss, and What I Wore at the Paradise Center for the Arts starting tomorrow night. Shows tomorrow night and Saturday night at 7.30. Shows Sunday at 2 and then shows again next weekend. Right. It's, it's going to be great. It's, um, it's a, a wonderful way to spend two hours to, um, you know, it's tax season. Come in and laugh and enjoy. There you go. <laughs> That's a great idea. I know. Just get, get that off your mind and come in and, and have a good time. And, uh, of course, you've got, uh, you've got to have a lot of help. Uh, you've got to have some sponsors to help you put this on. Oh, too. yes. Thank you. Um, we do have sponsors for the show. And they are Charter Communications and... Uh, uh, Federated Personal Lines, uh, here in town, Restoration Services, Rick Thomas is wonderful uh, business that's restored so many beautiful buildings downtown, and also Be My Guest, which is a new event um, center and also uh, has a loft to be rented out up, uh, up um, stairs by uh, Heidi Nelson. Okay. It's just a really wonderful place to go. If you haven't been there, it's just lovely. And so we're really thankful to them. They help us to keep our ticket prices down by sponsoring shows. Yeah, because you've got, I mean, you've got costs involved too with a lot of things. You know, sometimes you get things donated that you need, but other times you gotta, you got to buy some stuff. And then, of course, you got the rights. And rent. And, and rent and all that oh, yeah. fun stuff. Yeah, so so. you got to have some help all the time. Otherwise, the tickets would be outrageous. <laughs> well, right. And what we'd like to say is that, you know, you can stay in town and see a wonderful show and not have to pay $70 for your ticket like if you travel to the Twin Cities. So, you know, or you can come from the Twin Cities and pay $15 to see a there show, you go. see a great show. There you go. Uh, we've got uh, a few minutes left. Anything else we didn't cover that you want to talk about? Well, oh yes, um, on May 16th, the Merlin Players is celebrating its 20th anniversary get, uh, with a show called Songs and Scenes. We will have people from our whole 20 years wow, that of, sounds exciting. Of, sh of shows performing scenes, singing lots of great music. It's being directed by Michael Lambert, and um, it's a one-night only thing. Last time for our 15 year, we sold it out. So you can call now and get tickets for that at this time. They are $15 for Merlin Players season ticket holders and Paradise members, and $20 for the general public. So. And the Paradise box office number is 332-7372. You can call until 8 o'clock tonight, and then they're open again noon to 5 uh, tomorrow and Saturday, and they're also open one hour before performances. That's right. And so uh, please come to the anniversary show. You're going to, it's going to be really a lot of fun. That sounds like it's going to be... I know it's a lot to put together, and then yeah. but it'll be a great when it's all done. It's going to be a great one. Um, Cynthia's performing in it, and um, some of our founding um, mothers and fathers, Paul um, Summers and Kristen Sellentine and Linda Anderson and Dallas Musselman, and it's going to be a great show. All right. 
I bet you're excited about that one. I am excited about that, and the best part about it is I'm not doing all the work. Michael is. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a plus, huh? Yes. Cynthia, anything else from you? I mean, uh, this has just been such a joyous production to be a part of. I'm going to be very, very sad when it's over. I don't, I don't even want to think about that. Um, but that's the wonderful part about doing these shows um, with Merlin, with Juliana, is that really, truly, I enjoy the rehearsal process just as much as the performances. It's um, really been such a, a lovely addition to my life and such an important, become such an important one. And especially these ladies that, that I'm working with, I want to just mention their names again. Jennifer Pike, Sydney Place, Salstrom, Stephanie Weiss, and Shelley Whitehead. They are just incredible, incredible actors, and it's, it's really um, a joy to be on stage with them every night. And also, just this particular show, these are all true stories um, of, of women. So, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an honor, really, to, to tell their stories. And, and it is, it's just a very fun, it's a, it's a pretty fast paced show. Um, there's not a lot of downtime because since we don't have an elaborate set, there aren't things that have to go on backstage where you, you know, kind of get bored in between things. It's just a, a fast paced show, something for everyone. I promise if you come, you'll enjoy it. Um, Love right. fun. All Love right. Get over there to the Paradise Center for the Arts this weekend or for sure next weekend and see Love, Loss, and What I Wore, directed by Juliana Skluzacek and starring uh, Cynthia Paley as well as Jennifer Pike, Cindy Place Salstrom, Stephanie Weiss, and Shelley Whitehead. And it's going to be a great show. Thanks, you guys, for coming in. Thanks for having us. Thank you. KDHL Faribault, it is just about uh, 10 o'clock. Temperature reading is at 37 degrees.